Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. That's all kind of coming back now, right? Now the ATF really wants the ability to make anything that they so deem into um, a receiver or firearm, etc., right? So... That's my way of segueing into this. For sure. So they, it's a tremendous nightmare. Of course, we're talking about ETF attempting to redraw the definition of frame or receiver. Um, there's a lot of other things that are in that rulemaking, uh, mm-hmm. such as suddenly deciding that suppressors have a frame or receiver, you know, which mm-hmm. is not necessarily terribly problematic, but it mm-hmm. is just odd because mm-hmm. nothing really gives them the power to do that. They're, and they're, I feel like they're reaching very hard. It seems to me very clear that the ATF as an agency itself, even before the the administration changed, was very interesting in clamping down on 80% and um, and on uh, pistol braces, right? Yeah. So we mm-hmm. haven't seen them really move on pistol braces yet, but no. this is the 80% deal. And mm-hmm. they've done this, in my opinion, in the most ham-fisted way that they possibly could have. And like, it's hard for me not to smile because the the way they've gone about with this redefinition is just absolutely pants on head ridiculous. Is that so? Are you smiling because it's a good thing, and as a lawyer, it's a slam dunk to rebuke this stuff, or no, are you I'm just smiling because it's, it's retarded? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's it's it's, it's mm-hmm. clown world, you know. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's why I was smiling. It's like wow, they mm-hmm. actually went and did it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Like so, it's what here, my worry was that they'd say clearly, right? This is a, I thought the worst case scenario would be if they were like, oh well, anything that needs less than like X amount of machining time mm-hmm. to become a frame or receiver is mm-hmm. a frame or receiver, and that okay. would be a total nightmare. But now mm-hmm. what they've gone and done and said, well, absolutely anything could be the frame or receiver. The only way you can know if if it is the frame or receiver is if we've seen it and we told you it is. Oh, and also, if it's not done yet, but you can kind of tell that it might be a gun part in the future, it's also a frame or receiver. Yeah, so everything is a frame or receiver because they're trying to get rid of people making their own things. And then also the, the accessory... I don't feel it's a loophole, but what they feel is a loophole, right? By right. companies saying that, hey, we're making accessories, so we don't have to go to you. Right. Which yeah, is foreshadowing what's going to... Huh? Yeah. It's not a loophole. It's ridiculous. No, it's not. Uh, it's not. I don't, th- I don't think it is. Said. Yeah. And the thing is, they, yeah, they, they have the power under the law to interpret terms of the law. Mm-hmm. So they do have the power to interpret the word frame or receiver. They don't have the power to change it to frame or receiver or uh, any other part that could possibly hold any other part or uh, an incomplete version of that. Mm-hmm. That is completely beyond the bounds of their power. It's, bl- so it's blanket. Think, it's it's leaving yeah. zero, zero things that are outside of the realm, right? Right. But it's also like, you have to remember, their only job that they can possibly do is define that word, mm-hmm. right? And they previously had a definition. But now what they've done is deleted the definition and mm-hmm. replaced it with this huge paragraph, and then more terms that they then defined in separate paragraphs. Like, that's not defining a term. Mm-hmm. That's making a law, and mm-hmm. they don't get to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the weirdest part of this whole thing for me, and I've, I've been looking forward to talking to you about this, is it seems like what they're saying is that people who already have these things, you know, so Biden comes out, makes this uh, statement, right? Like we're going after the ghost guns. All right. There's all these ghost guns out there doing bad, horrible, terrible things, destroying the nation. Um, And then, so the ATF puts this out, but in there, did you see the part of it where I think someone said it was on page 21 where it's like, Oh, we're not saying people can't make their own guns. So no, can... and they actually say that multiple times. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So what they're trying to do with homemade firearms is, one, it's clear that the administration is obsessed with polymer 80s. They're trying to destroy polymer 80. They want to nuke polymer 80. Um, 
Two, mm-hmm. they're wanting to go after, as they always do, the most accessible, affordable options, uh, right, that that are mm-hmm. popular. So they really didn't touch 3D printing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that that tells you something. And it's either that they, you know, have the bit of wherewithal to, to realize that they don't have the power to, um, mm-hmm. or I don't know. Maybe some other reason. I mean, but, so you feel so you feel like um, they didn't really touch. I mean, they did definitely mention three D printing, yeah. right? The only and, thing that it does with respect to three D printing is mm-hmm. that I can tell, right? And I'm not mm-hmm. the ATF, uh, mm-hmm. but that I can really see is that if a FFL, and they also have this imaginary concern that like FFLs are like transferring all of these like ghost, you know, like well, yeah, transferring all without these ghost serializing guns. them. Right. Well, and you don't have to. You, you, you don't. You don't have to. Yeah. But yeah. What is all that happen? noise? What is all that noise, people? All right, it's over. Oh, baby face. Okay, uh, baby face. Cause I'm sitting outside his house. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, okay. I yeah. Mean, how many FFLs have you seen where they just had a bunch of? You know, completed polymer 80s and 3D. They don't. They don't want your guns that you built. <laughs> no, they're freaked out. And, and also, yeah. it's worth more as a parts kit. So, like, nobody does this. Yeah. But they spend pages explaining that. Oh, we have yeah. to do this because there's all of these pawn shops and gun shops that are buying privately made firearms and then reselling them. Like, like and they don't know the law. Crap. They don't. They don't know. They don't understand that if they did something like that, it would have to be serialized. I mean, um, they don't. They don't want it. I mean, but they, you understand what I, I like. I know exactly what you're going to say. You're right. right. If 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 I built a gun, because I've seen you say this, I looked at your fun right. busters about this. Uh, before I get in trouble, I did see, you. <laughs> I did see and hear you, sir. Like if I I could build a gun for myself, if I want to sell it, I could sell it. I don't have to serialize it. Right. But if you know what makes, why are they thinking that FFLs want to get into that game? They don't. They're just making it up. Yeah, they like, don't want to get into that. It's legal to do, but mm-hmm. it's also legal to sell a gun that was made before 1968, which doesn't have a serial number either, mm-hmm. right? And there's a specific procedure you do. You put NSN in your bound book, mm-hmm. and that's the identifying characteristic. Mm-hmm. So it really it doesn't make any damn lick of difference. It doesn't at all. But you're right. Most FFLs are FUDs, and they will think that they can't do that, mm-hmm. and they and they just won't. I mean, like, it's just not a real problem. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's happened. But they, they're making up all this crap to justify. So it's like, so that's why we have to hit the entire rule with a hammer because mm-hmm. of our imagination. It's basically mm-hmm. what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, so, so your interpretation is that they're not actually going after the person who, who has one already, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to get what, what, how you see it. I'm, get, I'm trying to get some free they're legal advice. They're wanting to choke them out. Okay. They're but wanting if, to choke you out. But here's the thing, here's the thing that's kind of like the crux of the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So lots of gun guys, which I understand where they're coming from on this. They're like, look, I have a hundred 80 percenters already and they're not serialized. I could build them all I want to. This stuff doesn't say I need to do anything. So I don't care about this. Okay. And, and because this, because this seems to be saying the manufacturers making these going forward have to serialize them and whatever they have on hand before they sell it, they need to serialize it. And then obviously, as we're talking about here, any FFLs or any other licensees um, that get this stuff have to serialize them or whatever, right? Or if you're a gunsmith, um, you have to, if you get this and you work on it, you have to serialize it. So there's a lot of people feeling like, uh, I'm kind of grandfathered in. I'm just going to go right. If I don't have it, I'll go right now and buy right. it before this becomes a rule. Um, is So first of all, I want to know, is that accurate from what you're seeing? Pretty much. Okay. And, so, it's, and it's a huge problem when people feel placated, right? Because they've already got their stuff. Mm-hmm. What about your kids? You know, mm-hmm. like, come on. Um, and that's that's what happened with the in '86 with the machine gun. Mm-hmm. Everyone was like, well, "I already got my machine gun. Mm-hmm. It's just going to make the price go up." Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. it did. <laughs> yeah, but and then but yeah. they also didn't stop there, and so that's the right. dangerous thing. Like if we agree to this and we let them feel like they could just make up make laws and and make up rules or whatever nonsense it is they're trying to do. Then they're going to eventually come for that. The whole intention of this, the whole right. stated intention, is to come for these things, right? All so of them. So here's the purpose. Here's the, here's the mechanism that I'm seeing here. They believe that, like you know, the 80 percent AR lowers and the armor 80s are like the big ticket items, which they probably are. To be mm-hmm. fair. 
Mm-hmm. And so what they think they can do is make it so that anytime one of those hits an FFL, it has to be serialized. And, and I think you may have saw in there, it does say mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. if you get, if you're an FFL and you get a PMF, you have to put a special serial number that ties it to your shop mm-hmm. so that they can go back and run a trace if they ever recover the gun. And by the mm-hmm. way, how many unsolved crimes do we have to deal with that aren't simple possession of a gun mm-hmm. where we have the gun mm-hmm. and a trace is going to help us. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. it, it, yeah, it's not an issue. issue. It's not an issue. Yeah. But mm-hmm. so, so, so check it out. So now they're going to have it to where any of these going forward that hit an FFL are going to get serialized. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to shut the factories off. So mm-hmm. the idea is, is that eventually, you know, two or three generations down the line, all of the guys, like you were saying, um, you know, who have a hundred of them and they don't care. Uh, well, eventually they're going to, they're going to pass through their estate and they're going to go to an auction house and the auction house FFL is going to serialize them all. And then it's going to be gone. They're going to be mm-hmm. done. They're going to be extinct mm-hmm. eventually. That's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.